let's do some more practice now. Compare these numbers, 3 and 5 tenths and 3 and 5 thousand ten thousandths. Did you write 3 and 5 tenths is equal to 3 and 5 thousand ten thousandths? If you did, you got it right. You realize that the zeros that come after that 5 have no value. You could cross them out. You could also add zeros to the other side. Let's take a look at how we would do that now. This is a fun one too. Let's go ahead and compare these numbers. 3 and 5 tenths to 3 and 5 thousand, because we read that like a whole number, and then add the place value position name. 5 thousand, 10 thousandths. So 3 and 5 tenths, we're comparing it to 3 and 5 thousand, 10 thousandths. Well, that looks like a lot bigger number, but watch. If we fill these in with zeros, wow, when we compare the number in the tenths place, it's the same. And every digit that follows, it's the same. That means that 3 and 5 tenths is equal to 3 and 5 thousand ten thousandths. Not too bad. We could also cross off the zeros. If we were starting out where we began, where we had no zeros following that number, and we were looking at that, we could just cross these off. They have no value. So we're comparing 3 and 5 tenths to 3 and 5 tenths. That's the same. They're equivalent. Remember, you can cross off zeros at the end of a decimal number if they're on the right end and no digits with value come after them. If you're comparing them, you can also add zeros to the right end of a number if it has less digits than the other number so that they have the same number of digits. It just makes it easier to compare. So after crossing off the zeros, it looks like this. 3 and 5 tenths equals 3 and 5 tenths. That was easy. Now we're going to do some ordering of decimal numbers. Remember, comparing is comparing two numbers. Ordering means that we're comparing three or more numbers. That was our vocabulary word for a couple of units back. There it is. Ordering is comparing three or more numbers. Again, we're still going to write the numbers vertically, lining up the decimals, which lines up all of our other place value positions perfectly. Begin by comparing any whole numbers. If the whole numbers are different, then the greatest whole number is a part of the greatest number in all. Just like when we were comparing, we begin comparing decimal numbers in the tenths place. If that's different, then whichever number is greater is part of the greater number. If it's the same, you keep going till you come to a place value position with different digits. Let's practice. When you write these down in your journal and you've got them written vertically, one on top of the other, I want you to make sure that when you find the number that has the greatest, you put a G by it. When you find the number that is the least value, put an L by it. And the one in the middle, you're going to put an M by it. So order these three numbers from least to greatest. That's important. From least to greatest. Take a look at those numbers. I'm not going to read them for you because I want you to read them for yourself. Did you write them in this order from least to greatest? Five and nine thousandths was the least, the lowest number. Five and two hundred nine thousandths was the middle number, the number that came between the other two numbers. And five and thirty hundredths was the greatest number. Wait a minute, there it is again. We see a digit that has a number that has less digits, but it's the greatest number. Compare those numbers in the tenths place. The 0 and the 2 are less than the 3. 
We can put them in order just based on the numbers in the tens place, the tenths place. Okay, so now we're ordering three different numbers. Again, we're going to write them vertically. Five and two hundred nine thousandths and five and nine thousandths and five and thirty hundredths. Hmm, let's see, how can we make this easier to compare? Let's add a zero here so that we have the same amount of digits in all of our numbers. If you like to, you can read that whole entire decimal part of the number. 209 compared to 9 compared to 300. That makes it easy to see that this is the greater number. This is the least number and this is the middle number. But remember, I also like to compare it the numbers in the tenths place. The 3 is greater than the 2 or the 0, so it's my greatest number. The 0 is obviously my least number, and the 2 comes in the middle. So when I'm writing these, I write them from least to greatest. I had to go back and check my instructions to make sure I didn't make a mistake just following directions. 5 and 9 thousandths is my lowest number. My middle number is 5 and 209 thousandths. And my greatest number is 5 and 30 hundredths. Even though it has less digits, it's my greatest number. We can add zeros when we're ordering, too. Take a look. If there's a different amount of digits, add zeros to help you compare or cross zeros off. Line them up vertically and compare them digit by digit. Let's practice. Order these five numbers from greatest to least. I want you to pretend like these are the times that people got when they were running the mile, let's say, for Coach Gunnels. Who won? Who had the greatest score? Who had the least score? And then write down who won the race. Let's see how you did. Did you write 9 tenths was the greatest number? 45 hundredths came next. 318 thousandths was the next greatest number. 2,143 ten thousandths came next. And 5 thousandths was the least number up there or the lowest number up there. We're numbering from greatest to least. Remember, the winner is the person who has the lowest number. So whoever ran that mile in five thousandths of a second or a minute is the winner. Now that probably wouldn't happen in real life unless you're Dash from The Incredibles, then it might happen. Let's take a look at how we would write those numbers out so that you can see exactly how I solved this problem. Okay, so now we're pretending like we are, we have five runners and they're in a race and we wanna see which one ran the fastest or had the lowest score. So we're going to compare these numbers by writing them vertically. Oops. Writing them vertically. Here's my next number. None of these have whole numbers, so I'm only comparing the decimal side of the number. See how I'm lining up all of my decimals and all of my place value positions too, actually. Okay, now you could fill all of these spaces in with zeros if you wanted to, and that would certainly be fine if it was easier for you to compare. My favorite strategy, of course, let's see if that works. It, oh, that looks like a heart, okay, is to compare the numbers in the tenths place because then I don't have to worry about rewriting my numbers with zeros. So I'm going from greatest to least, because that's what my instructions told me to do. Greatest to least, that means the nine is the greatest number, so I'm going to put it first. It's gonna be the first number that I list. Let's see, the four is the second biggest number, so it will be the second number I write. The 
three comes next. There, my two is going to come next. And my zero is going to come last. So when I write these, sequentially, I'm going to write them in greatest to least, starting with my nine tenths. That's my greatest number. Then I'm going to go up to my number two number, 45 hundredths. So my nice semicolons in between. I hope yours are much nicer. I write pretty sloppily with this. My number three number is 318 thousandths. My number four number is 2,143 ten thousandths. And my number five number is five thousandths. So this is, these are the numbers in order from greatest to least, greatest at this end, least at this end. So who won the race? Whoever ran their race in five thousandths of a second, of a minute. Remember, only Dash can do that. Now it's time to challenge yourself. Here it comes. In a math game, Alex has to choose a number that is greater than seven and 943 thousandths and less than seven and 949 thousandths. What must the digit in the hundredths place be in the number he chooses? Think about it. Write out your answer and explain it in your journal and then bring it back to school to check it tomorrow. I am so thrilled that you're challenging yourself. That is really exciting that you're enjoying your math. Finishing up, go ahead and review. Have you really mastered all of those learning goals? Remember we said those were really important learning goals. We wanted to make sure you got every single one of them. If you had trouble with any of them, make sure you put a question mark by them on your learning goal sheet. Write out your questions specifically at this point in your journal. What do you think you need more help with? Is it adding zeros or crossing off zeros when you're comparing and ordering numbers? Is it understanding that the number closest to the decimal is really worth the most and that more digits doesn't mean a bigger number? Those are all things that might be hard for kids. What was the hardest thing for you? What do you still need help with? I'm not even going to say it. I have to say it. Yeehaw! You're finished. You completed lesson 1-4, comparing decimal numbers. Get some good rest tonight and come in tomorrow ready to really, really practice and have some fun. See you later.